We've got the best female boxer in the world, in my opinion, on there, and a great, great uh, undercard with some really good young fighters on this. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we've got some uh, outstanding uh, undercard fights. Uh, see Willie Hutchinson out in the audience somewhere. He's going to be in action. Dennis McCann back as well and others. There's, a, there's some real good emerging young talent. There are. And that's one thing that Queensbury and BT are good at doing is bringing through these, these young, young talented guys and exposing them to the British public. And as you mentioned, Willie, Willie who I think is uh, going to be a serious, serious contender at light heavyweight. And also Dennis the Menace, wherever he is, I can't see him at the moment, he's out there, he's exciting little sod and everybody enjoys watching him fight, so especially I do. So it's going to be, it's going to be great there, and you say all well, these other youngsters on there, really good, good quality young fighters. Well before we get to the uh, main fights, if you like, Daniel Dubois against Ebenezer Tete and the world title fight involving Nicola Adams, let's talk a little bit about Archie Sharp and Declan Geraghty. Archie undefeated in 16 fights and he had his breakthrough fight against Leon Woodstock and then uh, following that with the uh, stoppage win against Sergio Gonzalez and then Jordan McCorry in his last fight, in his last fight. and uh, Declan Geraghty who never seems to be in a dull fight, the pretty boy from Dublin and a lot of people are saying that this could be a, a really, really fascinating contest. Well, it could be. I don't know. Pretty boy, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah not bad. Well, it wasn't me who invented that. I didn't invent that one. Anyway, well, Archie's he's obviously he's into the uh, title winning habit since last October, and, uh, and he's an ambitious young man. And uh, for him, it's onwards and upwards. But in Declan, he's got I think he's got a tough challenge, and this looks like it could be a potential fight of the evening. Thanks. Looking forward to Friday night. Thanks very much for having me. Hold your microphone. Yeah, it's not that's that's working. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, Sorry to tell you, Frank, I'm here to spoil the party. You might be disappointed for the night, but this will happen. Uh, Archie's a good boxer, yeah, he's a good boxer. He's a, he's a rangy, uh, switches, southpaw orthodox. Uh, he's a mover. I'm not really worried about him. He hasn't been tested yet. Like, he's beat Woodstock and uh, Jordan, which I don't write at all. Like, they'd be really handy fights for me. If I got them, them kind of easy fights, I've been given a bit more of a difficult task. I'll take nothing away from his WBO champion. I'm coming to the to his den. But expect me to uh, be in an entertaining fight. I'm going to come forward. I'm going to put the pressure on. I'm going to see what he's made of. At the beginning of the year, you were saying if I don't make something in this year in 2019, it might be time to consider whether or not I'm going to stay in the sport. But here you are, and this kind of is uh, the big night, isn't it? Well, I'm not thinking past this night, and uh, I do believe I'm 100% going to win it. And uh, so, there's no ifs or buts about what I'll be doing next. I'll be, uh, I'll be becoming the WBO European champion, and then I'm here to stay, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crazy Irish man who's here to fight, and don't give a fuck about anything else. So to speak. What, do you, uh, what sort of tactics do you bring into it, Declan? Because, you know, I mean, you've shown those fights against John O'Carroll that you can get into a war if you need to. Do you think this is going to be like that? Or might this be a bit more technical? I think Argy's going to move. He's going to go south pole. He's going to move on the back foot. I'm going to come forward. I actually switch. I'm actually more of an orthodox fighter. I've been be south pole for a few years, but I switch. I'm going to come forward as an orthodox fighter. Put, put my uh, head on his chest and see how tough he can be. The, the boys he's been fighting are one-dimensional. They're just straightforward. They don't bring anything to the table. No disrespect to the Leon and Jordan. And he's, he's doing a good job on the ball. It's going to be showtime Friday night. I'm going to see how good he is. But do you think people have underestimated Archie's power as a puncher, that maybe he's a bit sharper a puncher than sometimes people give him credit for? Yeah, I think he's like eight knockouts. He hasn't, like I said, he hasn't fought anyone that say, yeah, but some, some Johnny men are tough, you know what I mean? But, uh, Power, you have eight ounce gloves on, anyone can get hurt. It goes to show you, you know what I mean? Like, I was walking the market for you. I was only warming up, but got a bit calm and a bit over cocky, and one shot came out of nowhere, which he didn't believe it could do. So, like I said, eight ounce gloves on. From the word go, I've always said anyone has a punch with eight ounce gloves on. Well, let's hear from Archer. You hear what he's got to say there, and undoubtedly you'll have studied his style and you'll have worked out your tactics. What do you think for Friday night? Hey, do you know what? Um, Declan Gary is a very good fighter. We know, we all know that he can box. He's sitting there saying he's going to come forward and sit on my chest. 
uh, fair play to him, lucky I've had a good sparring with Ricky Burnson, who does that for 10, 12 rounds anyway, so I'm sandy. Um, I just adapt to anyone's, anyone's style. Do you believe that he's going to come forward and put his head on your chest, or do you think that's a bit of, bit of uh, bluff? Well, listen, if that's what he's been training to do, then fair play to him, but whatever he brings up on Friday, I'll be there to match with anything. So, like I say, a great fighter can adapt to any sort of style, and that's what I believe I am, a great fighter. We talked about those wins you had against uh, Leon Woodstock, against Jordan McCurry, against Gonzalez. Do you feel that you're significantly a better fighter now than you were 12 months ago? Yeah, 100%. I've, um, listen, I've, I've got a very good team behind me. Uh, Paul, my nutritionist, does all sorts of tests. And since in the last 12 months, my, my results are showing. Numbers don't lie. I'm getting bigger or stronger at the weight. And on Friday, you'll see a completely different Archie Sharp because Declan does bring a, a completely different style. Well, he certainly comes forward, but we'll soon see what, what, um, what style he comes with. But you'll see a different Archie Sharp because I'll have to adjust to the different style that he brings on Friday. I'm sure you'll have sold bundles of tickets as ever. What about fighting at the Royal Albert Hall? Because so many great names have been there over the years. Yeah, 100%. It's an ironic um, venue, and unfortunately, at the beginning of the year, obviously, I was injured, so I couldn't be on that show, but I still went to the show. And um, what a great venue it is. The atmosphere was unbelievable. And yeah, I look forward to, to being in that ring on Friday night. And winning, are you going to struggle with the fact that he's a Southpaw? How much experience do you have of that? Listen, no. to be honest with you, I'm just there to do my, my job. I'm there to box, I want to box. And, uh, Regarding Southpaw Orthodox, it doesn't really matter because, like I said, in my fight, it'd be how I want to, how I want to fight that night. So if he wants to come Southpaw Orthodox, it's up to him, whatever he wants to do, I'll be there to match whatever, I'll have the answer for it. Are you ready for this to go long or do you think you might catch him early? Well, we'll soon see, we'll soon see. Like I say, he has been, he has been chinned. Um, I'm not going by that, but it's possible. It's just going to be in the back of his head. He's been knocked out at three times now. That will play on any, on any man's head. When was it knocked out three times? Okay, well, you stopped three times, yeah? No, but that was quite a poor one. Stop, please. Well, regardless, you've been... You've been and the referee stopped it. Well, either way, it still happened, so that's what I'm saying. So that's still going to be in the back of any man's head. It would be. Um, but listen, I've, I've made sure... I know this fella here, he's obviously trained hard. He's going to be leaving no stones unturned. He knows that this WBO is a massive fight for him. So I've had to make sure that I've trained harder than ever before to make sure this fella here don't come and take my belt in, in London. Declan, last time out, when you fought Marco, Marco McCullough, you were winning the fight, took the first couple of rounds, and then got whacked by that right hand in the third. What went wrong? What happened? Yeah, I just got comfortable. And he, he said after the interview he couldn't believe him. What he truly didn't expect it. To be honest with you, I expected it to be an easy fight, and I was torn into an easy fight. This is boxing fight, it happens. It's a learning curve. Like I said, eight ounce gloves, anything can happen. Uh, for Chini was, that's his opinion of no disrespect to Archie, I don't know him personally, so I can't not like him or not, I hate him, you know what I mean, it, this, at the end of the day it's this business. And uh, I'm here to take his title, but for uh, them I've been, Tennyson's known as one of the biggest punters, Tennyson, did, uh, the referee jumped in and stopped me there with him, which I was, keep, I was fresh and keep on going. I said, the referee asked me, was I alright, I said yeah, and the referee jumped in with 10 seconds to go to that belt. John with the body punches, the referee stopped. And then uh, Marco, so we have Archie now in front of us and uh, I hope he brings a big crowd because to be honest with you, I'm bringing a, I'm bringing a small army but the, but the loud army. I'm, I think it's about 70 odd, 70, 70 to 75 tickets on that to do on. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an Irish fighter coming abroad, so it's a good, good fan base I have. It's what you want, Frank, isn't it? Two fighters who are really up for it, talking with a, a modicum of respect and knowing that on the night it's going to be fireworks. interesting to see. It's and going to be fireworks. It's going to be fireworks. You know, you've got a guy who's come to fight and yeah. obviously another guy who, who, who relishes people come to fight him. So it's going to be a great fight for the fans and the best man will win on the night. We'll cope yeah. with the style and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Ah, uh, heavyweights and... Uh, Daniel, who you may not know, perhaps you do know, has been named the British Boxing Writers Young Boxer of the Year, just 22 years old, uh, British champion now, and on Friday aiming to take the Commonwealth title as well, Joe Erskine back in 1955, Joe Bugner in 69, Frank Bruno in 1985, and Herbie Hyde in 1993. 
those are the previous heavyweights who've won that accolade that Daniel's got, and it's, uh, it's an indication of just what a, a great year he's had, Frank. Oh, he's had a fantastic year. He's gone from strength to strength. Um, every performance he's improved. Um, as I've said earlier, he's, for me, the best young heavyweight in the world. I'll put a big burden on his shoulders by saying that, but he's delivered and uh, he's fighting a guy who's 19 wins, 16 by knockouts. You know, uh, if he's half as good as Larty, and he comes to fight like Larty, we know we're going to get a cracking fight there. So um, Daniel's got to be his best. I know he treats everybody. Uh, trains hard for everybody like it. He's fighting for a world title. He's got a fantastic trainer in Martin Bowers. He's done a brilliant job with him. They've got a great chemistry between the two of them. And this guy's, uh, this guy's here to, he thinks or he hopes he's going to upset the apple cart. We will see on Friday if that's the case. Well, the statistics certainly tell us that Ebenezer can punch. He's 31 years old, stands Six foot three is expecting to be weighing around about 16 stones and 16 stoppage wins inside 19 wins. He can punch, there's no doubt about that, and so can Daniel, so you can expect some fireworks with these two. Now, Ebenezer doesn't speak great English, but he's got his, his man with him here who's going to help translate, hopefully. If you just pick the microphone up, please. And I was going to, we, we mentioned Richard Larty there, and as you know, he gave uh, Daniel Dubois a tremendous fight earlier in the year for as long as it lasted, four rounds eventually is where it finished. So for people who've not seen Ebenezer before, you know, the statistics say that he can punch, but how does he compare as a fighter with Richard Larty? Right up to your mouth. He said, for Latte, he gave Latte sparring for this last fight, and he sparred Latte sparred with him all the time. But as far as he's concerned, he said he's a better fighter than Latte. In what way? He can move and he can punch. So he can be able to do So these quotes that we've seen being put out by the publicity office about, I'm going to finish what Richard Larty started. Do you really believe that? Are you hearing him? Are you hearing him? Okay. No, you can't hear him. Could you hold the mic too far? Yeah, right, so right in front of you. Tell us again what he expects to do on Saturday. On Friday, rather. Friday, he expects to beat to Daniel on Friday. He's trying to finish up what uh, Richard would have, Richard gave a good fight, but he, he kind of ran out of gas, but he's going to beat him on Friday. What do you think of Daniel as a fighter? Yes, he said he's watched him he, he watched him um, against Latte, he watched him against Gorman, he knows how he fights, so he knows what he's going to do to be able to beat him on Friday. We will see. And, uh, and it, uh, to what extent, you know, I mean, have you really been calling for Daniel? You've been wanting this fight and uh, a chance to be the first Ghanaian Commonwealth heavyweight champion. Wants to not let the um, Ghanaian crowd, Ghanaian fans back home know he's going to bring the title home on Saturday. Okay, well, Daniel, he's the uh, WBO African heavyweight champion, and he says he's uh, says he's going to take the title home. 
So it's, it's my job not to let that happen and come through again and come through and start. Have you had a chance to see him at all? Not really. I've seen a few tapes, a little few clips. Um, I haven't really studied him. I don't study my opponents that much. Um, I'm just ready for a fight. You quite rightly in your last fight against Nathan Gorman got a, a, a lot of uh, positive reaction to it because uh, not only your power but also your boxing. I mean, were you, were you pleased to be able to show just how far you've progressed as a boxer as well as a, just a puncher? I wasn't trying to do anything. I, I went in there and I just do what I know I can do. I, I've been in this game for a very long time for the amateur system. So it's just natural for me, you know, using my jab and just putting on a boxing performance. How good do you think he was, Frank, in that last, uh, in that last win? Because, uh, you know, there were plenty, people forget, there were plenty of people, and fairly respected people within boxing, who were saying that the, the movement and the, the skills of Nathan Gorman were going to give him absolute fits and that he was going to be possibly on the end of a very, very tight fight. It didn't happen in the end. Well, no, I mean, Nathan actually caught um, Daniel a couple of good shots, which I'm sure he'll acknowledge. But at the end of the day, um, it was going to be a boxer against a puncher, and it turned out that the, the key to winning that fight was, was the jab, and the better jab was with Daniel, and he, he showed that he can box, and uh, obviously we know he's got the power and did what he had to do, but he can box. You know, he's not just a, just a big, you know, cumbersome clubber. He, when, he, when he wants to, when he gets that jab going and he's getting better and better, it's a, you know, he shows, shows how capable he is. I mean, I've said it, said it on many occasions, he's the best young heavyweight I've been involved with, and the names you mentioned who boxed at the Albert Hall, all those guys, I think, at this stage of his career, he's a better fighter than all of them. And considering he only had seven senior bouts as an amateur, that's a bit of a, you know, where he's at now is, 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 is something a little bit special. He's a special young man. How much more do you, how much more improvement do you believe You've still got there, Daniel, because uh, I mean, you seem to be getting better and better with every fight by leaps and bounds. Yeah, every every fight I improve, so every fight, every challenge brings something different. So every fight, I, I show I show what I can do, and um, and I get better. I saw a quote to an interview with Frank Bruno, saying that he believes that if it happened that you were put in with the top men, that you'd be ready for it now, never mind in the future. I know you've got, I know Frank's job is to just bring you along step by step, but Frank's saying that he believes that you are a genuine world-class fighter right now. No, no, I definitely believe I am, and um, it's only a matter of time before I'm up there, you know, with the big names, but, you know, on Friday I've got to take care of business and handle this opponent first. This would be your seventh belt, I think, if you took this already. In 13 fights. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I'm just. This is just um, the you know the path set for me. So I'm a, I'm a man on the mission. I'm not going to be stopped. He's come here fancying it though, and if he does come out and fight better than Richard Larty is, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because Richard caught you a couple of times. No. Um, if he's if he's coming up for it, I'm up for it. It's going to be a good fight. Fireworks. Definitely. <laughs> Frank, you talk about the, uh, his, his place where you believe he is in world boxing now. He's got to win this one, but there are other big fights out there which could be happening sooner rather than later. Well, you know, he's got to win this one. We've seen quite a few so-called easy jobs and easy fights happen over the last uh, year that have not turned out to be the case. Been a few upsets and a few guys have given a great account of themselves in fights that they expected to just be four guys. He's not a four guy, he's, he's 19 and 0, undefeated fighter. You know he can punch. He's got to come through that, and then we'll look at what, what happens afterwards. You know, I've made a statement as, as how I look at him, look at his ability and how good he is at this moment in time. Beats this guy and does it in style. If he does all those things, then, you know, he's not far off. What makes you, you know, you pay tribute to, to Martin, Martin Bowers, his trainer. How do you think that Daniel has really improved in the last 18 months, two years? Where's he, where's he added on his game? I think from the boxing ability. You know, obviously, it's not just about the fighting. It's being in the gym, it's training, quality sparring, which he has. And you know, what I've, I've liked, what I've seen, is how, how his jab is developed and, how, and what a good jab it is. You know, for me, 
My old uh, mentor in boxing was Ernie Fossey, who worked with me for many years, late Ernie Fossey. He used to say, and he's, say, if you can't jab, you can't fight. And that is it, really. Every, good fighters have great jabs, and he's got a great jab. You know, there's, the, there's, a, there's a bit of a comparison to make at this stage of his career, but he's got, the, he's got that Larry Holmes jab, and I love that. I love seeing fighters who can jab. That's a wonderful, wonderful tribute to, to, uh, to a jab because uh, I think in our lifetime there's probably not been a man who, who threw a jab better than Larry Holmes. Does that uh, mean something to you hearing that, uh, Daniel? No, it's a great compliment to have, uh, especially from Frank. He's been in the business a long time, so I know he knows what he's talking about. So, finally, little message for Ebenezer about what he can expect. No, a, a devastating performance as a... Um, I've always shown and I'm going to turn up on fight night, you know, giving him my all, so I'm ready for him. He's not a braggart, he prefers to do his talking in the ring, Daniel, but it's, uh, he's become, and he's becoming, I was going to say, but he has become one of those fighters who you definitely want to see because you just know it's going to be spectacular, Frank. Silent but deadly. Once he's in that ring, you know, it's just, uh, it's all excitement. There's no doubt about it. When he's in the ring, it's, uh, you know, you're on the edge of your seat waiting to see those bombs explode. And a, a, a final rallying call for people to get there. I know it's Friday night, which for some people isn't the, isn't the easiest, but it's a, it's a journey worth making. Definitely. You know, you're in uh, central London. You're going to see a great night of boxing. We've sp spoken to the guys, and Nicola and, and, uh, and all the fellas at the, at the top table. This is going to be a good night, and we're going to see some of the best talent in Britain and Ireland. It's going to be special, you're going to be able to watch it on BT Sport. We're going to be doing face-to-face -face photographs in a moment or two, and if you've not get, yet got the interviews which you need, all the guys are here, so please ask them, make sure you get what you want. But before then, any questions from the floor on the basis of what you've heard here? Anybody want to uh, shout out questions to the lads here? And lasses. Just one for technicality. Yep. Um, so Archie Sharp's been talking about the fight with Jurgen. Do you think that he is overlooking you? Uh, for Archie, for Archie, I really couldn't give a fuck he's overlooked me or not. To be honest with you, at the end of the day, he's dealing with me for really. For boxing wise, he's he's a good boxer. Archie won nine under age English titles, did you? No end. His experience, good amateur he was. I won twelve Irish titles, so. Boxing IQ, he was the better boxing IQ. I'm not going to take nothing away from him. He's overlooked me, he's a silly fucker. But if not, he's in for If he has, it's going to be a hard night's work. But I expect a hard night's work for me. And I believe Friday night, everyone in England's going to be in for a great night of boxing. Archie, are you a silly. Are you overlooking him? No one's overlooked anyone. Like I say, he's got himself in the best position he can. Um, and I have as well. And like you say, it's the best man wins on a night. He's a great boxer, I'm a great boxer, and obviously I believe I'm going to be the best. And that's why, I, oh, sorry, excuse me. That's why uh, Jamel Heron was uh, mentioned. I'm not overlooking anyone, like I said, Friday is what I've got to deal with first. Then fights at a uh, later date, for sure. Any more? Any more for any more? Right, well, thank you very much for coming today. Face off. Yeah, All good. Thanks, so. <laughs> 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 
Do your best, boys, when you get my age. I'm not going to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> you want to live that long? <laughs> <laughs> die, die young. Yeah. Really? Well, I love you. Thanks, man.